thank you all for being here. And uh, um, this is an important hearing and an ongoing uh, important discussion about pay parity for our reserve and guard members. Um, the topics of pay parity employment protections for guard and reserves is very important to me as one of my own staff members and former residents of my district has seen what happens when an employer does not hold up their end of the bargain of giving our returning troops the opportunity for promotions that they may have missed out on during a combat deployment. Imagine you're 20 years old and you go off to Iraq to serve your country, you come back as is often the case in Las Vegas, uh, to a tip position at a casino. After a year of absence, and although your employer has brought you back to your old job, you realize that five or six of the people you helped train uh, in lower skilled positions are now in a higher position and earning, get this, between $600 and $900 a week more than you will be. You received USERA protection during training uh, and uh, during your activation briefings and post-deployment. So you bring the issue up to your employer of your promotion and they tell you they're glad to have you back, but make no effort to promote you. You don't have the time as a 20 year old to file a complaint because you're now once again a full-time employee and a part-time student at the local university. So you go back to work, keep your head down and continuing to work your old job at a lower rate than uh, your co-workers. This is just one story, but it's something that happens to members of the Guard and the Reserve in Las Vegas and across this country. I also recently attended a sending off cere ceremony of the uh, Explosive Ordnance Disposal Company in my district, and I want to make sure that we're looking out for their best interest upon their return as well. Uh, we have a responsibility to do better for our returning service members, and I hope this discussion will help us identify ways that we can do that. Uh, in the story I just highlighted, my staff member did not go through the formal USERA complaint process. I suspect this is a not an uncommon occurrence. Uh, for Mr. Robinson and Ms. Lucas, I wanted to ask you, with regard to USERA employment protections, how often do you hear uh, from service members about filing complaints regarding promotions? So what we hear most of the time is that uh, they, they don't openly discuss the, empl the employer, uh, doesn't openly discuss the reason for it. And there's, it's very difficult for some of the younger employees to go in and state their case, so to speak. Um, but it's it's prevalent it's prevalent throughout uh, throughout the force and throughout the employers that we try very hard to maintain those relationships with. Um, specific cases come up routinely, and I would uh, the ESGR representative for each of the states would be more in a position to give you actual numbers and talk to you about the way that they're trying to address some of those issues. But it is prevalent through the force. Thank you. Mm -hmm. ROA, um, on our website, we have what's called the Law Center, and it has um, law reviews on USERA and SCRA. So we are very much involved with that, and most of those come from members who have come to us. Um, so we know, I mean, right now we have six active cases on promotions. What we have found is that um, people are having problems in that area. The biggest problem the biggest thing that I could see that they have problems with going forward is one, they actually don't know how to go forward with it mm -hmm. and the amount of money it would cost to hire a lawyer to go f forward with it. But the other thing is, is just proving that they have been discriminated in that regard when it's so obvious, but the proof of it is very difficult. Okay. Uh, so basically in terms of empowering our service members to file these complaints, it's really knowledge and trying to identify ways that we can provide them proof. So when they come to us, what we do is they, they have access to the law library, which is normally how they find us. And then what we try to do is help them, you know, kind of work through all the details to see if they have what would be a valid case. And then often we try to set them up with pro bono lawyers. Um, if we can't find one in their area, we'll go to one that, that they would have to pay for, but um, get some support. Great. Thank you very much. My time is up and I yield back. Thank you.